Hey guys, a little coffee bean here. You guys saw on my dad Crazy Dave's kitchen channel uh, the ribeye roast in his homemade fridge. I wanted in on the competition, and guess what I have for you today? We are going to compare Crazy Dave's homemade fridge with the steak ager. Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. Well, as you saw, a little coffee bean wanted in on the competition because she loves to smoke <laughs> the competition. Well, what are we doing? Yes, Crazy Dave's Kitchen built that homemade dry aged steak or dehydrated machine, whatever you want to call it. Well, guess what? There's a product out there called the Steak Ager. So therefore, Crazy Dave's Kitchen, along with a little coffee bean, we're going to get the competition to see if our product is still number one or is the competition just as good? Well, let's show you what we're doing again on this setup. Let's open up the refrigerator here. So we sanitized it all, cleaned it all out. We've got the different meters here, the thermometer here. We've still got the fan over here. We've got the UVC light, very important. We've got a whole new salt tray here that we filled with a half a box of kosher salt. We've got the wire rack here. And over here in the door, we've added four brand new extra large activated charcoal filter. Well, let's go ahead and close that up. And now we're gonna go into the kitchen. We're gonna cut that ribeye roast in half and we're gonna show you the next step. I'll Stay tuned. The market called the steak ager. So if you look here, here's my shipping label. And you can see it says the steak ager. It's got my name on it. It came to me in a good size priority mail box. Now, what does this device supposed to do? It's supposed to be kind of like a mini refrigerator, isolated, temp controlled little unit that you put into your regular refrigerator here. And believe it or not, you're supposed to be able to open and close your refrigerator, go in and out as much as you want without disturbing the actual dry aged meat that's in this device. But here's my concern. Right out of the starting gate, these guys got issues. Not with the product, I haven't even assembled it yet. It's with the customer service, or I should say, lacking of it. See, this is what happened. When I went online and found these guys, they advertised it for $159.99. Okay, cool, sounds reasonable. I'll go ahead and purchase it. But then I clicked on the link, took me to the website, $249.99. Dude, what the heck? That's like almost $100 difference. So I started chatting with them online through Facebook and through the messenger and so on. And they're like, what are you talking about? They just give me all kinds of excuses. I even sent them screenshots of what I was seeing. And they still came with all kinds of excuses. Well, as they couldn't make up their mind, I started tracking the backlinks on this thing and got it into the shopping cart to allow me to purchase it for $159.99. So I'm figuring, hey, I'm happy. I even emailed them a copy of my invoice. Three weeks later, here's the problem. My card was charged $199.99. I asked about it, oh, well, the 249 is supposed to include shipping and we just get you free shipping, but it's still $199.99 because it's a new, improved, upgraded model and who knows what. Hey, I don't care. The sale price is the sale price and the advertised price should be always honored. So Stakeager, you're watching this, I want my $40 back. Now you guys, my fans, again, thanks for watching because I'm still gonna review this product and I'm still gonna do side-by-side -side comparison. Because who knows, maybe I just might like this product that I'm not worried about the difference because it may be that amazing. You're watching Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Stay tuned. Oh, hey, it's you guys. Hey, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Hey, I just got done assembling that steak ager. And I'll tell you, they give you some instructions here, very informative. Man, I didn't have to use it. It was actually very easy to assemble this machine. Now within the instructions, it kind of gives you some very good information, talks about what kind of meat to use, talks about the process of how many days. It even tells you about the unit itself. They also give you instructions, this model is Wi-Fi enabled. For those of you that have that Tapa Chu unit, through the Wi-Fi thermometer, very similar to that. Just follow the steps, very easy to connect. And then when you do connect, it actually communicates with the machine it gives you your humidity, it even gives you the temperature, 
and it even tells you how to monitor a tray one and a tray two. So you can actually be dry aging two different meats at two different times and still have records on that. Well, let's take a look at the machine here and we're gonna show you what the features are. Okay, so here's the front of the unit. Now, when you get it, you get a couple pieces, you get kind of like a little bag like this that has some like little plastic rivets in it. You get a bag of the uh, Himalayan salt, you get the charcoal filter, and you gotta get this really foam, let me open this thing up here. This foam tray here, kind of flimsy, but I'm actually gonna replace that with something different. Now, you get these two racks here. So this is rack one, rack two, and inside the machine, you'll see if we go really low here, Way in the back there, you've got that UVC light. Remember, my homemade version also has that UVC light. So that's really, really good. Now over here on the left, that's one of the fans. Over here in the back is another fan that's running. But this one is the third one, and you'll see it's not running at all. Wait a minute, do I have a bad machine? No, not at all. That one there only runs when the humidity is above 80 percent well that's the answer for you guys that means that crazy dave's homemade machine actually worked great as well because my humidity never really went above 80 percent well there's your answer for those of you that's concerned about the humidity oh my god what do i do do just leave it alone and make sure it's at 80 percent or lower well, let's continue our journey of walking around and exploring this unit here. So we're walking around it. Here is one of the sides. You can see the little rivets here. And then over here is another one of the sides. This is actually the back here. And I put you know, some information in the back of my machine so I know kind of what's going on. And you'll notice that this cable here is really thin. That's awesome. Why is that? So you can put it in your refrigerator and not have to cut the gasket. Well, let's go over here on the other side here. And here's the other side. Same thing. Now, this right here, that's your exhaust port of where your charcoal filter needs to go. And again, it's not on. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to manipulate my fish filters and make them work, or maybe just use some charcoal filter media like that here and just cut it to size. Well, stay tuned as we continue this journey on Steak Ager. So guys, that's the steak ager. I'm kind of impressed on how it went together, and I'm impressed with the features that this particular model has. I'm a little concerned about the size compared to my homemade version, but the homemade version is a dedicated full-size mini fridge. So that's actually perfect for the home consumer to put in your regular home refrigerator without taking up the whole refrigerator and of course making the wife mad, unless you own the refrigerator. But stay tuned guys, because coming soon, like I said earlier, I'm actually gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of Crazy Dave's Kitchen mini fridge steak ager versus the actual steak ager machine itself. Okay guys, a little coffee being back. So, right here we have a 17.22 pound uh, boneless ribeye roast, and it's time to cut this baby in half. Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. So, we're just gonna kind of look at it, go back and forth, any mini, mini, mo, and we're gonna kind of go in half here. And we're just gonna start cutting this thing away. And this knife is really, really, really sharp. So, kid. If you don't trust your knife skills, please ask your parents for help. We're gonna split this in half. And there you go. Look at the inside of that beautiful ribeye roast right before it goes into the dry age machine. Well, we're gonna go ahead and finish peeling it off the pyro pack here. And we're gonna go ahead and just peel off that. And we're gonna go ahead and start putting them into the respective units. Now you notice I'm wearing gloves, why? Well, this is actually in a sealed cryogenic pack, which means that it's kind of been sealed out and doesn't have any bacteria. Well, we want to try to keep as much of the bacteria off of the actual unit or 
off of the actual meat before we put it into the steak ager as well as Crazy Days Kitchen steak aging machine. Okay guys, so after we removed it from the cryo pack, you'll see that there's a lot of blood everywhere. So we're going to kind of wipe it down with some paper towels real quick, kind of blot it. And we want to get as much of that blood off of the actual meat. We want it to kind of be a little bit on the dry side. We're not using any water on it because we, again, we don't want to add any extra contaminants. We're just blotting it with the paper towels. Okay guys, so my dad just put the ribeye into the steak ager and now it's time to leave it in there for 35 days and close it up. Okay guys, so now the other half of that 17.22 pound row gets to go into Crazy Dave's unit. We're gonna set that down nice and even. And now we're just gonna close this baby up and let it chill out. Now, just like before, we're gonna do the readings like we did before on the door here on my unit. And then on the steak ager unit, it's Wi-Fi. So I can always dial into the actual you know unit itself and I get real-time data. So I'm gonna measure the humidity like I did on this one, compare the two. I'm also gonna register the temperatures and we're gonna keep track of that all. Hey guys, welcome back. Crazy Dave here. And a little coffee bean. And guess what today is? Seven days into that 35 day dry age ribeye from Costco. Now remember, it's a competition between Crazy Dave here and a little coffee bean. Now Crazy Dave, we've got, or I've got, the homemade dry age steak refrigerator that I kind of built myself. A little coffee bean's got the steak ager. And she wanted to do that competition of the steak ager versus Crazy Dave's kitchen. Well, now we're going to open up the fridge here so you can see the steak ager, which is a little coffee beans, versus Crazy Dave's Kitchen, the big one. Okay, so we're going to open up the fridge and check the steak ager. Look at that. Look how beautiful it is. Okay, guys, so you just saw a little coffee bean steak ager. Now, this is Crazy Dave's homemade steak refrigerator. Now, as you can see, just like last time in previous videos, I marked the refrigerator with the dates, times, temperatures, and the humidity. Well, let's open this baby up and take a look at that steak. Now remember, these are two equal size cut steaks. One in the steak ager, and the other here in Crazy Dave's refrigerator. Now, what else do I have? I added this. Now, what is that? That's damper it. It's a moisture absorber. Well, let's close this up. What does that do? Well, what it actually does is it helps to control the humidity here in the refrigerator that Crazy Dave built. Because the little coffee bean steak ager actually has a built-in control module that monitors the humidity. Now, for those of you that were curious as to what the humidity should be at, they want it at 80% or less. So if we look here, you'll see we have 16%, 80%, 40%. Uh, one time, actually two times, it went a little bit above 80, but for the most part, it's right there in the target zone. You want less than 80% of humidity in order to age this steak perfectly fine. One week down, four weeks to go. Well, if you ask me, I think I'm in the lead. Really? Yeah. You really had to say that to these guys? Yeah. You, you think you're in the lead? Yeah. Wow. Guys, honestly, I think it's neck to neck, okay? Of course, you're gonna root for this one because you know, she's cute. No, not in this video, because we're going head to head. And just because it looked good at one week, who knows what's gonna happen in week two. Stay tuned as we continue the competition of Crazy Dave Kitchen versus A Little Coffee Bean.
Hey guys, Elena Coffee Bean here. Well, we are two weeks into the five week process. Let's check the steak ager. Now look at that. Two weeks down, three weeks to go. And if you ask me, I think I'm ahead of Crazy Dave. Don't tell him I said that. Now, let's go check on Crazy Dave. Crazy Dave here. Two weeks down, three weeks left to go out of a five week challenge. Well, as we saw earlier, it's Crazy Dave's Kitchen, a homemade dry age machine here versus a little coffee bean steak ager. Well, you saw hers. Now, let's look at mine. Look how beautiful that is. Still too early to tell who the actual winner is. I would say it's still neck to neck, but stay tuned. We still got three more weeks left to really find out who's gonna win. And I was thinking, the best way to find out who the winner is, is with a taste test. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a little coffee bean here. Three weeks down, two weeks to go. Let's check on the meat. That actually looks pretty damn good. Now, let's check in with Crazy Dave. Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. As Little Coffee Bean said, we got three weeks down, two to go in the five week challenge. You saw her meat looks pretty good. Let's look at mine. Well, there you go. Remember, we're doing a five week challenge. Still too early to tell who the actual winner is. But we're gonna find out in two weeks when we slice into these things and we're actually gonna have some people do a blind taste test to find out how good it is. Crazy Dave here and I'm out. Hey guys, a little coffee bean here. Well, we got four weeks down and one more week to go. That means the meat will be ready for Christmas. Let's just see how it looks right now. That looks pretty good actually. Come closer. <laughs> actually, to be honest, I think mine's better than Crazy Dave's. Just saying. Don't say anything. Don't you dare. Hey guys, Crazy Dave's Kitchen here. Hey, let's take a look at mine. Remember, four weeks down, one week left to go. And I think, yeah, it should be done right in time for Christmas. Well, let's take a look at mine. Now remember, mine is the homemade version of the steak ager or the dry aging machine using a Costco refrigerator. Let's take a look. Honestly, if you ask me, I think it's doing pretty darn good. But I have done some sneak peeks at a little coffee beans, you know, steak ager meat, and actually it looked pretty damn good. So mine seems to be shrinking up a lot. Hers seems to be maintaining the actual structure. That's a good thing. But looks can be deceiving. The true test on who did better will come soon when we do the blind taste test. Because remember, you never judge a book by its cover. Crazy Dave here, thanks for watching, stay tuned. Hey guys, a little coffee bean here. Well, we already finished the five week process. First we're gonna weigh it, trim it, and then
We are gonna cook it. Let's take a look at mine. Mine hasn't really shrunk, shrunk in that much. So we removed the lid and now it is time to weigh it. Well, there you go, 7.4 ounces. Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. Yeah, five weeks down. It's time to open this baby up and see what we got. We've already saw a little coffee beans, a little ribeye roast. It looked pretty good, didn't shrink a lot. Mine, when I open mine up, I see what I thought is a little bit of shrinkage, but again, we really can't tell. So let me go ahead and pull this baby out and we're gonna so weigh remember, it. A little coffee bean was about seven pounds, two ounces, seven pounds, four ounces. Here goes Crazy Dave. And I've got 6.2. So it's about a pound different between my roast and her roast. But if you look at mine, mine seems to be kind of what I think dry. And let's look at hers. Here, actually, hers got a little bit more deeper color right here. There's mine. But look at the bark. Look at that. Between the two, they look pretty close. But we're going to cut into these, we're going to trim them off, slice them up, and then we're going to taste test them. Okay, so a little coffee bean nice girls are not up to par quite yet, so I'm going to go ahead and trim her. Now remember, this is her rope. We're just going to kind of trim a little bit of it. Not a lot of fat here, but we're still going to just lightly trim it away. And remember, save the fat. And I'm going to go ahead and do a bad thing and slice it towards me. I'm going to trim off as much of the bark as possible. Again, saving the bark. And you want to save this for like some soups or different things. Um, you know, me, I just take them and kind of smoke them and give them to Indian Liberty here. So we're just going to tr keep trimming this away. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Okay, guys. So this has pretty much been trimmed up. And let's kind of lift it up off the wax paper here. I did trim both sides. You know, I didn't want to trim a lot of this here. This is still some of the, the barking here. But I want to show you guys this. Check this out. Look at that right here. That is some beautiful color for marbleization here. This looks pretty good. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to weigh it. Remember, it was 7.4 ounces before trimming. And now we're going to weigh it to find out how much we actually lost in trimming. So remember, this was at seven pounds and four ounces. It is now five pounds and 10 ounces. So we lost a little under two pounds in the dry stuff, the, the biking stuff, which we're gonna show you right here. That's what we have, the whole tray of the biking kind of stuff. And you'll see that some of it's kind of bark and some of it's thick. But remember, save this. It makes excellent soup. Or in my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and cold smoke this stuff and make some wonderful dog treats with it for Christmas. Okay guys, so that was little coffee beans. This is Crazy Dave's. Looks a little dry, but we're gonna start trimming it, same thing. And we're just gonna trim it away, get all the fat away. We just got that trimming until we get down to the really nice looking meat here. Just trim away a lot of the bark. And we're just going to keep trimming it until the bark is pretty much removed from this ribeye. Well, stay tuned. Okay, guys, so this is Crazy Dave's road. And look at that color. We're going to turn it over here, it's all trimmed up, and look at the opposite side. Now that is a gorgeous piece of dry-aged ribeye. Well, stay tuned, and we're going to slice this up, and then we're going to cook it. Okay, guys, so Crazy Dave was 5 pounds, 2 ounces before trimming, and now we're down to 4 pounds and 12 ounces. So we lost about the same between... Crazy Dave's here, as well as the little coffee beans, about an average of a pound to pound and a half 
different in trimming off the bark. Well, hey guys, you know what? I thought about a really cool idea. Normally I would cold smoke the jerky or the little pieces from the ribeye. But you know what? I got a really cool deal on an Excalibur 9 tray Fuji hydrator, uh, replacing one of my old 5 trays that broke. So you know what? Why not dehydrate this and make dog treats? Well, here we go. I'm just gonna lay it in the trays here. And we're just gonna dehydrate away. Okay guys, so we trim mine up and here it is. Okay guys, so now you saw a little coffee beans. Now check mine out. So hey guys, Crazy Dave here. And a little coffee bean. All right, so you just saw the five week challenge on the boneless ribeye. Now that was choice meat from Costco. Now as you can see when we trimmed them up, it looks like a little coffee bean got a lot more uh, versus Crazy Dave's Kitchen, but that's okay. Now I did have a couple people look at mine and they felt that mine had the more of the aged look to it. Um, the little coffee beans they felt was a little too wet still, so they're not quite sure on the actual steak ager machine itself. But hey, for Crazy Day's Kitchen homemade machine, I think it did pretty damn good. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook up some of that ribeye. We're gonna just label them number one, number two, and we're just gonna show them to our neighbors, that's our blind taste testers, and we're gonna let them decide which one really has the amazing flavor. Well, stay tuned, and we're gonna cook these babies up. Okay, guys, so over here is a little coffee bean, and over here is Crazy Dave. Now, these are kind of the thick pieces, uh, a little bit of what was left over when we sliced them up. So now, we're gonna throw them over here into the Traeger. Now, this Traeger has the genuine jerry system, but we're not using that. We're actually gonna use the Smoke Daddy Sear Daddy. Now, what is that? Well, if you open this up, it allows you right here, you are actually emulating a propane grill using wood pellets. This baby is hot. So we're gonna use this to sear these. And we're only gonna sear these for a couple minutes each side, for about two minutes each side. We're gonna go ahead and close it up real quick. And we're gonna cook up these steaks for about two minutes each side because remember it's dry age and dry age cooks really fast but then we're gonna finish it off inside using a little bit of butter and oil a little bit of garlic and some other seasoning well stay tuned okay guys so I did two minutes then I flipped it over two minutes then I flipped it over and I cross angled it two minutes and two more minutes so if you look at these beautiful grill marks here from the sear daddy they're actually really Super good grill marks here. So now what we're gonna do is over here, I got a pan here with a little bit of butter and some cooking oil. We're gonna add a little bit of rosemary to this. And we're gonna take a clove of garlic and we're gonna go ahead and cook off the oil. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the steak here on a medium to high heat. And we're just gonna cook them a couple minutes each side until they're done, and then we're gonna let them rest, and I'm gonna layer it with a little bit of butter, so the butter just soaks right into that. Stay tuned, I'll show you how I cook it. So into the pan, I added some garlic and some rosemary. Now the heat is on low, and we're just gonna let this simmer a little bit. So what we want is the garlic oil to infuse with the butter. Now don't burn the garlic. After the garlic looks nice, soft, and starting to brown, we're gonna remove the garlic, and we're gonna add the steaks. Now, we remove the garlic from the butter and we turn the heat up to a medium high. And now we're gonna let these babies cook into this butter. Now, as it's cooking, we're gonna coat the steaks with the butter using a spoon. All right, so as the steaks are cooking, 
We're taking the butter and we're gonna layer it on top of it using the spoon. I just let this stuff sit in here and we're gonna leave it in here for about a minute each side and we're gonna turn it and repeat the same process. Okay, so now the steaks are done, I pretty much let them rest here into the pan and I rotated them and remember I coated them with a little bit of butter here and we're just gonna let them chill out and then we're gonna cut it up. Okay guys, so now it's t time for the taste test. So over here on the left is number one. Over here on the right is number two. Now we're not gonna tell you whose is whose, at least not yet. Hey guys, Crazy Dave Kitchen here. And a little coffee bean. All right, so we just did the taste test between number one and number two. So let's take a look here. Remember, we got Crazy Dave's Kitchen over here versus... <laughs> a little coffee bean. A little coffee bean. <laughs> so, who was number two? Me. And who was number one? All right, so in the blind taste test, what were the results? Well, quite simple, actually. Number one, which was mine, a lot of people were saying that it had a lot of the steakhouse flavor, it just melted in your mouth, and it was really super amazing. Now, number two, which was the little coffee beans, and that was the steak age machine, was very, very close. A lot of times people had to take seconds going back and forth between number two and number one. And they all came back with number one, but said number two was really super close. So what's my, my overall thought? Well, my unit's bigger, it's separate. It does require a little bit more maintenance on it. So you gotta be checking the temperature twice a day like I did checking the humidity and making your adjustments accordingly using that red um, moisture absorber and so on. Now the steak ager is basically self-contained. You put it in the refrigerator and you kind of like set it and forget it. Now it does have the app. Now the one thing I did not like about the steak ager, A, is that customer service I told you about where it was advertised for $149 or $159 and they charged me $199. I still haven't heard back on that. It was That's just the first bad. thing. It was just bad. Two, a couple of the screws were loose and they said they were going to make new screws and I still haven't got those yet. And three is that it takes a lot of space in your re regular refrigerator. I mean, I had to give up half of my double, I'm talking an extra large refrigerator. Now, for an average family, giving up half that refrigerator? That's a painstaking task, and to do it like I did for 35 days, I'll tell you, that was hell. Now, if you're gonna get yourself a small mini fridge and you wanna put the steak ager in it, hey, go for it. But since you're gonna go and buy yourself a mini fridge, why not build it Crazy Dave's way and have more room? Well, there you go, and thanks for watching. Crazy Dave here, and I'm out. Me too. A little coffee in my mouth. Please.